In diving, there's a condition known as Martini's Law. It states that while a diver is breathing compressed air, inert nitrogen in the gas mixture at depths greater than 100 feet can cause nitrogen narcosis, a state of drunkenness and disorientation that can be easily reversed by simply ascending to a shallower depth. But what if you couldn't? You found yourself in a daze, trapped in a narrow passage, with safety just feet away from you. You're helpless as you float there, rapidly losing consciousness. This was the exact experience shared between Rob Parker and Dan Duffer Malone while on a morning survey dive in the Bahamas on August 17, 1997, battling a dangerous environment and persistent narcosis, their lives would be changed forever. This is the story of the Four Sharks Blue Hole incident. Rob Parker, a dedicated diver, had a history of cave exploration. In 1997, at 35 years old, he ventured to the Blue Hole with four others. He wasn't someone you'd label as the average diver. In fact, the documentary and dive crew knew well that they had the makings of an exploration prodigy among their ranks. While both he and Duffer were experts in their field, and each with thousands of dives in their careers, Rob Parker was known as one of the foremost international divers at the time, and the best diver in the United Kingdom until or since with his own depth record standing at 206 feet in the Wookiee Hole in England for 20 years before losing the title to another daredevil diver. It was once by Sheck Exley that had Rob been born in Florida, where underwater caves are abundant as opposed to England, he would have already been the world's preeminent underwater explorer. However, in spite of this, he was already on his way to being just that, with his reputation built since before his early 20s of being someone willing to do what no one else was. Self-trained technical rock climber, explorer of underground caves no one had discovered before, experienced diver in multiple other underwater caves, including potentially fatal ones previously shared on this channel. In any case, when the time came to continue their journeys through the oceans, their business led them to Four Sharks Blue Hole, a seaside ocean blue hole along the fault line northwest of Dolly Kay's South Andros in the Bahamas. They were initially there to be the subjects of a German documentary about blue holes surrounding the world's oceans, of which a late colleague, Rob Palmer, had helped discover. Curious of note, the documentary was additionally a posthumous honor to Rob Palmer after he'd passed away months earlier in the Red Sea during an unexplained medical emergency on a dive, never to be seen again. Palmer himself, while at a technical diving conference weeks prior to his death, was the one who planned the dive to Four Sharks as well as participate in the film, which is what led Parker to take his place on the journey at all. However, knowing it was one of the largest caverns in the area, with a section completely unexplored by the rest of the community, Parker knew he would have to take the position in Palmer's place and push through the grueling hours of a two-week intensive shooting schedule. As for Four Sharks itself, it's no more dangerous than other blue holes or underwater caverns, with its entrance alone being a coral-rimmed basin about 33 feet deep, followed by its body being 230 feet long by 66 feet wide and as deep as 197 feet. Deeper inside Four Sharks is a narrow crack at 131 feet of depth at the far end of the cavern wall, which descends further out the other side. It was this narrow crevice and what was on the other side that Duffer and Parker wished to explore. Nevertheless, it had to be done in the late evening prior to the next morning when documentary crews would be gearing up for another restless day of filming, as it was often monotonous and routine with little excitement offered. A fact of life that Rob Parker himself was becoming increasingly agitated by. This last dive would be their opportunity to go further than anyone had before in Four Sharks Cavern and explore the unknown deep cavern beyond the restriction of the narrow passage. At around 8 p.m. on August 17, 1997, with the boat situated right over the Four Sharks Blue Hole, Parker and Duffer looked at one another and with their two support divers gave the OK signal and dove backwards into the water. With some final checks being made and a confident fist above the water and downward signal, 
the four descended into the belly of the blue beast. The plan was for the four to descend through the entrance of the large cavern together, where they'd place spare tanks filled with nitrox, an alternative gas mixture used in diving to help with decompression on their ascent back to the surface, and the two support divers would remain around the large cavern while Parker and Duffer would explore the narrow passageway and hopefully find out what was on the other side. With a guide rope leading up to the restrictive passageway and a personal guide rope tied off to lead into the restriction, Duffer and Parker both made their way through, leaving their support divers behind. After what felt like an eternity of what was little more than crawling, let alone swimming, they made it through the tight two-foot-wide restriction as it opened up into something more than they were ever prepared for an ocean rift. Like the restriction and other parts of the cavern, a rift wasn't an unexpected sight, but coming upon one without realizing it had previously existed was an experience beyond words. In every direction, they waved their flashlights around, the beams being swallowed up by an empty void. All around them was just a massive, empty expanse with no ceiling, no wall, and no cave in sight, just empty dark water. Instead of fear, the two experts felt the rush they'd been searching for. With little trouble or patience, they began to descend with Parker, wanting to see if they could find the floor of the rift. At a depth of 206 feet, they switched to another gas they'd prepared for the depths in order to prevent nitrogen narcosis and oxygen toxicity, a gas mixture called Trimix, and continued to descend. Surprisingly, after reaching their planned dive depth, there was still no floor in sight. Being forced to admit their loss and begin the lengthy journey and ascent back to the surface, Parker and Duffer turned around. Yet mere moments into their return back to the restriction, something happened. The regulator for Duffer's Trimix malfunctioned with any attempt to repair it proving futile, which forced him to switch back to compressed air. This wouldn't be too worrisome, but Duffer knew that once he did, it would only take a few breaths to induce a huge wave of narcosis, and he was right. After halting Parker to attempt to communicate his predicament, the two came to a very loose understanding of the trouble, and continued to the restriction this time with Duffer in the lead. However, after making it back to the opening, Duffer realized something wasn't right, and turned around to realize Parker wasn't behind him anymore. Frantically waving his light around, he found Rob Parker free-falling into the empty darkness below. He dived quickly after him, caught him by his ankle, and stopped the descent at a depth of about 230 feet. Now towing his dive buddy, who was seemingly in a wild daze, it occurred to Duffer that maybe Parker had to switch to air as well, meaning Rob Parker too was now suffering from nitrogen narcosis. As if such an incident couldn't make the journey worse, Duffer was kicking so frantically to pull both himself and Parker back to the restriction, he'd kicked his fins off, now using only his bare feet to propel them back to safety. Kicking and kicking, using all his body's strength to carry them, eventually they made it back to the opening. After a moment, Parker's kicking returned to normal, and with a sigh of relief, Duffer realized that whatever had happened, Rob had returned to normal, and they could swim through the opening with little issue. Advancing into the restriction, Rob was just below Duffer as they pulled themselves forward, and both of them were wedged sideways between the rocks with no visible bottom below them. Eventually, leading in tow, Duffer squeezed through the opening and switched to the stash tank of Nitrox. However, after turning around, he realized Rob was gone. Despite wanting to help, the size and experience constraints of the support diver, Tom Iliff, made a rescue impossible, even for Duffer, who was now on a gas designed for ascending rather than descending, and would have killed him had he tried to search for his friend. Faced with the certain death of oxygen toxicity and navigational hazards, Duffer and Tom had to abandon the search. After a demanding three-hour long decompression, alone with their own thoughts, the team resurfaced, confronting the reality of Rob's disappearance which was met with distress, particularly from Steffi Schwab, Rob Palmer's widow, who insisted she could have been in and out of the tight crevice within minutes. In the following days, the recovery operation was delayed by tides, and when they could finally access the site, Rob was found deceased, 
trapped in a narrow passage less than two feet wide at a depth of 140 feet. His gear was jettisoned to retrieve his body, which prevented further investigation into the cause of his incapacitation. A Coast Guard investigation suggested loss of consciousness due to nitrogen narcosis as the cause of death, though the exact cause remains a mystery to this day. Rob's remains were repatriated and cremated, with his ashes scattered around his beloved caves in England, leaving the circumstances of his fatal dive to the depths of Four Sharks Blue Hole. If you enjoyed this video, kindly leave a like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.